Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. This is Hunter from Mount National Photography. Join me tonight as we are going to be finally finishing up a long-term project that I've started from this past month. We're going to be going after the elephant trunk, the flying bat, and the squid nebula all in one wide field setup. Now I started this project probably last month now as I've been having not so great conditions in between having a very rainy season and dealing with all the wildfire smoke. But last night I got a little bit more data out of this. I roughly have about 20 hours or so. But last night I was able to start getting some sulfur and oxygen 3 with the dual narrowband filters I'm using. And tonight I'm going to be doing the same thing again as I've had about 15 hours worth of the HA and O3 with the L ultimate filter so that's already good and ready to go but hopefully finally tonight we can finish this project one for all and I can switch out the wide field setup and go right back to my Explore Scientific with a little bit of some zoom as we do have one particular target I would like to capture next but I don't want to spoil that as of yet. Now I didn't know for a while that I was going to be able to finish this target because of the recent issue that I had with my ASI 2600 camera dying on me but luckily ZWO came through and I'm back running and I've used the camera since then and it's been wonderful it's like brand new so once again big shout out to ZWO for getting that back for me tonight but now let's go ahead and go through the setup of what we are going to be using to capture this super wide angle target that should put off a wonderful display here for this target in general. Now tonight for this ultra wide field setup, I will be using the Rockinon 135, which is a Canon camera lens that has been modified and adapted to work with the ZWO cameras. This is 135 millimeter focal length, so pretty darn wide for ash photography. And the nice part is I can shoot this down to an F2. So not only is it an ultra wide, but it's also an extremely fast system too. Basically a mini Rasa to say the least. And of course, I will be imaging with the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro one-shot color camera. And inside of the filter wheel here, I did use two separate filters for this project. The first off was the Optolong L Ultimate, which is a 3 nanometer bandpass filter for hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3. But tonight, I will be using the Ascar D2 Color Magic filter set, which indicates of oxygen 3 and sulfur 2 at about 6 nanometers or so so we can go ahead and have a SHO version of this target. Of course tracking everything tonight will be with the ZWO AM5 stream wave gear mount with my makeshift at home pier. Controlling everything we'll be using the ZWO ASI Air Plus the brand new version Guiding, we'll be using the SV Bunny 30 millimeter guide scope with the ZWO ASI 120 guide camera to complete the entire package. Now we've gone over the basics of what equipment we are going to be using tonight. So let's go ahead and wait for nightfall so we can go ahead and do a rough polar alignment of the system after I've had it underneath 
uh, the cover for a little while so it, it, it gets a little bit off from time to time until I'm able to build this observatory which I've been waiting now to the fall months because of one a little bit of some financial time uh, like issues with it and also it's just been ridiculously hot here this summer very dangerous heat with multiple days of heat indices between 110 and 120 degrees and with my health problems I've had in my life that is not a good combination so we're going to wait until nightfall and begin setting things up of our image sequence and we'll go ahead and get the show on the road. Now before we go any farther we got a sponsor for today's video and it's me. Now I'll open up a print shop thanks to getting into 3D printing anything regards to astrophotography or just astronomy in general being able to have you know better cable management have a little bit of extra accessories for your sea star or anything that could be used to help you in your astrophotography journey are you ready to take your astrophotography to the next level at Alton Astro Prints we've got the perfect 3D printed solutions to enhance your stargazing experience Welcome to Alton Astro Prints on Etsy, your go-to shop for custom 3D printed accessories designed specifically for astrophotography. We know that capturing the beauty in the night sky requires more than just a great camera. It requires the right tools and setup. From cable management solutions for your deep sky cool cameras to mounts for your mini computers or accessories that are designed to make your astrophotography setup smoother and more efficient. Each product is crafted from durable PETG material built to withstand the extremes of hot, cold, and dew-filled nights, but also designed to handle the toughest conditions so you can focus on capturing those breathtaking celestial moments without worrying about your gear. Whether you're an amateur stargazer or a seasoned astrophotographer, Alton Astro Prince has a little something for everyone as we continue to grow our selection. Explore a range of accessories and discover how we can enhance your night sky adventures. Visit us today at Alton Astro Prince on Etsy and find your perfect accessory to elevate your astrophotography experience. Let us know how we can help you reach the stars. Now that we're back here at the computer, let's go ahead and start processing the data that we have. I've already gone through the liberty of stacking everything that I have, both from the filters of the Elk Ultimate and the Ascar D2 for hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur too. So I've already gone through the process of doing dynamic background extraction. I went ahead and did blur exterminator and some noise reduction as well. Now let's go ahead and extract the channels out and be able to combine for our SHO image. And luckily now there is a brand new script that I've just recently been aware of that really takes the, uh, the time and effort completely out of it. Because before I usually would have to completely extract all of the color channels itself, combine them together to get my final image. But now I can just do one click and it does it for me. So this is also called DB Extract. You can find that under Script Utilities DB Extract. I will have a repository for this as well to make your life a little bit easier. And the only thing you have to do is make sure you select what kind of camera sensor you have. I have the IMX 571. You select whatever your HA03 filter is and your S203. Go ahead and extract it, and it will do everything for you and even give you the final process of the SHO, where you can just stretch to your heart desires. So it'll go through with steps here and there, and boom, 
we now have all three of our channels here. We have our hydrogen, our sulfur, and hiding in the back here is our oxygen. Or you want to go all in general, like for me, I'm just going to use Bill Blanchin's Unlink Stretch, which takes a second here. And there you go. You have your stretch combined image already. But of course, we're not going to leave it of this messy green, you know, very ugly looking thing. But say if you don't want to use the SHO aspect of this, you can use the individual channels that you have here and be able to combine them together. So like if I want to do an HOO and not worry about the sulfur, I can just stick those right aside. What I can do then is go ahead and use the unlink stretch from Bill Blanchin for the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen three. And then go over to LRGB combination and basically just add them right in for both of these. Apply global. And it basically just takes all the hard work out for you in the end. There we go. See, like, hmm. In HOL, this looks a little bit strange, but if I add a bit of the HA as the luminance. So you have different combinations that you can do with this DB extract in the end, you know, if you wanted to have an HOO. So there we go, adding the luminance has helped a lot too, which I may end up with this in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize all these since we don't need them anymore. And just stick them off to the side. And we'll go back to our S uh, SHO image here. We got all these really ugly magenta stars. We're not going to use those. I'm going to use it back from my other filter, the HA03. Once I color combine those together and do some uh, color extraction, we'll be able to actually get some pretty normal stars with this. So let's go ahead and start working with our nebulosity here. I'm going to remove these stars and then we're going to start with a little bit of some narrowband normalization. There we go. We got rid of our very ugly looking stars. We do have a little bit of some magenta here in the background. I like to sometimes just use correct magenta stars on the actual uh, nebulosity too. It's just an easy way to take care of this. So now we can work with a little bit of some narrowband normalization here. Do the SHO, and it's already looking very colorful now. We can add a little bit of some SNR. We can almost go with a little bit of like a rainbow uh, SHO with something like this. Add a little bit of that green to keep it in. I can add some more uh, sulfur. I can boost the O3 a little bit too. I have to make sure I don't overdo it because it will bleed into the background. So we'll keep that as normal. Do a little bit of some highlight reduction. We can mess with the shadow point a little bit. I'm gonna keep that all the way and this is already looking pretty cool as it is. Kind of like a rainbow SHO palette here. And we can do the same thing as well for our HOO. We can just remove the stars from this. And then we can kind of compare to see which one we like for our final image. I am a big fan of HOO, especially when it comes to the flying bat and the squid. After I did a long project, a little bit zoomed in, I did that as HOO because that looks very nice. i just not a big fan of the little bit of the off-color set for that because the squid looks a little bit weird when it's green. It looks a lot better when it's blue. 
So there we go. We remove the stars from that one too. Stick that off towards the side. We have this weird blemish here too, but we could fix that with a wonderful tool from SETI Astro. He just came out with the blemish blaster. So we can open that up. Drag it over. Looks like we got multiple areas here, but luckily we can go ahead and get rid of a lot of these in general. That. Make sure I'm not missing any more. There's one there. Another one there. It's just from a lot of these bright stars that we would see. It's leading these little donut holes. Which this is also a free tool as well, so I'll leave a link to the repository for this as well, especially for all of his tools. He's got quite a bit now to this day, so let's go ahead and execute. And just like that, all those really annoying little donut holes are gone. We can go ahead and apply to our regular image. And there we go. All gone. So now we get to play with a little bit of some colors here on the both of them, and we'll see what the final image looks like with SHO and HOO. Well, that took much longer than I anticipated on trying to get this final image here. I kept going back between with SHO and HOO, and I just kind of let it sit for one night, but then I went the next night here and went back to reprocessing and this is what I end up with an HOO version of 35 hours of data to include the elephant trunk the flying bat and that elusive squid nebula there which has come out quite nicely thank you for watching as always everybody make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe to the channel as we continue to have brand new content here relatively soon and a couple of review videos on the way as well. And as always, if you happen to be in the market for anything that I use today or if you want to you know, shop around through ZWO, Agena Astro, High Point Scientific, or if you're after a C-Star, I have affiliate links down in the link below. Also, it just helps the channel out. It doesn't cost you anything else. It just gives a little bit back of an incentive for me for recommending a lot of these products. And as always, be sure to look up at the sky whenever you can. Clear skies, and I will see you in the next video. And thank you for today's sponsor of Alton Astro Prince for sponsoring today's video. Have a wonderful time, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.